Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a floor value equation. Let's start with the definition of floor value. How do you define the floor value of x? It is defined as the greatest integer less than or equal to x. So if you have the floor value of x is equal to n, that just implies that x is between and and n plus 1. And in this case, of course, n needs to be an integer. So if you have something like 3.14, its floor value is going to be a 3 because you're basically just rounding the number down. Okay, so how do we proceed with the solution here? As you can see from this definition, it will be meaningful if you just call the floor value of x n. So by accepting that or by assuming that the floor value of x is equal to n, you can actually get a lot of good things. First of all, you can safely say that x is going to be in this interval, right? That's the first thing we get. Second, you get something like this, 2n is equal to 3x, from which you can basically solve for either x or n in terms of the or in terms of the other variables. So in this case, I'm going to be isolating x because at the end, I'm trying to solve for x and it will be meaningful if I isolated x here. So here's the two things that we're going to be using, this one and this one. Okay, let's see how we can use those together. Well, obviously, if uh, x is equal to 2n over 3, I can replace this x here with that one. So I can just write this inequality as n less than or equal to 2n over 3, which replaces x, and then I have the n plus 1 here. So basically what it comes down to is solving this inequality. I should say probably a system of inequalities because we do have two inequalities here. But again, remember that n is always an integer here. Okay? All right, let's go ahead and see how we can solve this inequality. And then at the end, we're going to be finding the x values using this equation. All right. So how do you solve this inequality? Well, you can kind of break it down into two inequalities. You can safely say that while well, this means n is less than or equal to 2n over 3 and 2n over 3 is less than n plus 1. That's what it means. Now, we can multiply both sides by 3 because 3 is a positive number. This gives me 3n is less than or equal to 2n. Now, at this point, don't make these kinds of mistakes because they're very, very critical and obviously they don't make sense at all. But sometimes people do that. Cross out the n's and we get 3 is less than or equal to 2, which is, of course, meaningless, right? We're not going to do that because obviously we cannot just divide both sides by n, especially when n is negative or 0. So here's what we're supposed to do. Put everything on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 2n and this should give me 3n minus 2n is less than or equal to 0, which means n is less than or equal to 0. So that's one of the inequalities. Let's go ahead and solve the other one, and we're going to intersect these. For the second inequality, I can just multiply both sides by 3. So that should give me 2n is less than 3n plus 3. And I'm putting the n's on the same side and putting the 3 on the opposite side. I should be getting something like n is greater than negative 3. But don't forget that these are connected with the word and, which means we're going to find the intersection. And if you look at the intersection of these two inequalities, you're basically getting something like this. n is greater than negative 3, but at the same time, less than or equal to 0. But remember, n is an integer. So there are only a number of integers on this interval, and they are n equals negative 2, n equals negative 1, and n equals 0. Well, interesting. So we only found three n values because n is an integer. Now, this is going to take us to the x values because remember we said that x is equal to 2n over 3. So by using that, by using that, we can basically find the x values. Let's go ahead and find them. See how we go about finding the x here. So if n is equal to negative 2, then x is going to be negative 4 thirds. If n is equal to negative 1, x is going to be negative 2 thirds. And if n is equal to 0, x is going to be 0. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow at the same time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.